Hello and welcome. Happy New Year 2010 and welcome to the next in my series of Lego steam engine models. Uh, this, is in res this video is in response to many of you who've asked for more details about how these are constructed and uh, this is an improved version of a model I first posted about two years ago on YouTube. This model has a number of improvements over the prior steam engine model. Um, I'm using a slightly different frame structure to support the beam, the walking beam that uh, forms the, the core of the engine. And uh, these are, by the way, these are the Expert Builder series of LEGO parts. I don't know if they make these anymore, if they make them in the same sets. The set I'm using is a childhood set that's about 30 years old now, from the late 1970s. But it was called Expert Builder, and it has a lot of these nice... Uh, beams and gears and rods and things that are a lot of fun to construct with. So I assembled the beam out of a couple of different uh, uh, separate uh, beams, kind of tacked them together and assembled that. I built the crankshaft out of a set of bricks and plates with a couple of parts because I didn't have a convenient set of gears to make this crankshaft. And you'll notice, obviously, I'm kind of limited. I didn't have exactly the right colors or the right shapes every time I wanted to do something. So there's a bit of a mongrel quality to this model because, of course, you know, the colors don't all match up and stuff like that. Big improvement in this model this year is I, I put a, a gear reduction on the flywheel or a gear uh, increase on the flywheel. Light little plastic model like this, the flywheel doesn't have enough mass or weight to really provide the smooth, slow operation. So by gearing up the flywheel, by uh, gearing it up like that, I get more um, energy storage in the flywheel at a slow speed of motion, and that helps it run much better at slow speeds. So here's our... our uh, and here's a number of you ask, how do we make the uh, cylinder on this thing? How do you make the piston and cylinder out of Legos? Well, the first thing you have to realize is that even though it's called a cylinder and a piston, it doesn't have to be round. And so we actually have a square cylinder and a square piston. And the piston is made of just a plate and a big gear with the rod snapped together like that. And that goes into a square cylinder. And the main thing you really have to watch for in assembling this is to run your fingers over the surface here and make sure that it's nice and smooth. Make a point to press the the bricks together and line them up carefully so that you get a nice smooth sidewall because if there's any scratchiness or roughness or if your dog's been chewing on these pieces or anything like that it's not going to work because it's got to be really smooth so you slide that in here uh, slide that in I left a hole I use some of these special expert builder plates that have holes in the middle of the plates to make for my uh, piston rod there and then uh, have a cylinder assembly at, the, at each end, at this end and at the bottom end, there's no, one, one down there too, there is a small opening in the side of the cylinder wall and this is the valve port for operating this engine. And I have a slide valve. Go look up on the internet anything about steam engines and you'll learn what a slide valve is and what a piston is. So here's the valve and the valve opens and closes that port and slides back and forth and changes that port from power air, from pressurized air to exhaust air. And, and it does it in synchronization to make the engine run. And uh, so let's start to, and this is actually, the way this is actually constructed, this is not technically a slide valve. This is technically a piston valve. Again, it's square, because I'm using Legos, but it is technically what would be called a piston valve. So we'll start to put this together here. Put this, I had this apart, let me just slide this back together so that goes like that. And, oop, I, I've left something out. Okay, so here's my valve chamber. That's got to go on first. I've got to put that on first. There's my valve chamber. Slide that into position. Come on. Things are all been out of shape since I took it apart. Okay, there's my valve chamber. Get this back where it goes. Slide that back into place. Okay. And I'm going to slide my, here's my valve now. So my valve is going to go down to its valve chamber right here. These little extra bits right there and right there, they're just to keep the valve plates from snagging and catching on that opening as they go past. Otherwise, they tend to want to catch and get stuck and cause the engine to jam up. So those keep it from, from doing that. So I'll slide this into place. So this is the valve mechanism for the engine. This is the valve that, that changes the airflow in the cylinder. And it's a double acting piston, so we have air moving in and out both on top and below the piston so it's a double acting piston so this changes the airflow makes it move and then we have uh, 
our bow, our gear right here. We're gonna hook up our crosshead to our piston rod. Tighten that back into place, okay. And uh, then over here on this side is our valve gear. And this is again, much simplified from the two years ago model. I've uh, managed to kind of bungle these extra rods together, make a really long valve motion there. So uh, we now have our valve gear. The valve gear on an engine like this has to be at 90, degree, 90 degrees opposite motion from the crankshaft. So we're taking the valve motion off in this direction. So I want this motion to be at 90 degrees op opposite cycle from the crankshaft. So when this crankshaft is in full motion going up and down, our valve gear is, is just doing nothing. And then when this valve gear is at its, uh, when this crankshaft is at its neutral position right here, the valve gear is at its fastest acceleration moving that way. And so you end up with this 90 degree synchronization between the valve events and the crankshaft. And so there's our, our motion right there. And now I'm gonna show this to you working on, on vacuum. This engine will work on pressure or vacuum, uh, blower or vacuum. Vacuum is, tends to be preferable because the vacuum action tends to actually suck the bricks together and hold the model together better. If you're using pressure, you run the risk that the pressure is so high that it causes the bricks to pop off the bricks, the engine actually explodes because the air pressure in there is forcing the bricks apart. Whereas if you use vacuum, it kind of grabs the bricks and sucks them together. So, but either way it'll work because this engine thankfully have a nice really big piston on here and uh, it doesn't take a lot of pressure at all. In fact, if you could get enough breath, you could probably blow it with your breath. Um, check for any binding. It's, there's, you need to really be careful about friction. There can't be any friction in here because if there's anything that binds anywhere, this little engine will not, not like it at all. So it's got very little friction. I've checked everywhere, everything's nice and loose. So I'm gonna plug in. Uh, so I'm on vacuum now. So we're doing a, a vacuum position on this pump here. So this is my power, this is where I wanna use my uh, air or vacuum connection. So we'll just hook this up. And there we go. And you can see it, it works pretty well. We're on vacuum here right now. So this is a, I'm sucking in vacuum through the center and then it's uh, pulling in the atmosphere through the ends of the valve up there and down below too, there are holes in the bottom of the valve chamber down there. And you'll see it, it, it manages to run very smoothly. As I pull the vacuum hose away from the opening, I'm reducing the vacuum strength. And as I reduce the vacuum strength, you can see it still will run It'll still run pretty smoothly at a very slow speed as I, as I reduce the amount of vacuum. It'll run nice and smooth at a very slow speed. And I'll turn this around so you can see it from the other side. a lot of fun, isn't it? So this is a an accurate, uh, fully functioning beam engine, industrial beam engine. This would have been used in factories in the 19th century to drive tools or production equipment. Double acting, single cylinder beam engine. And it's working just like the real thing would. It's got pressure or vacuum pulling and pushing on the piston. And I just wish I had a quieter pump so that this would be more fun to just leave running on the countertop for guests, but uh, it's still impressive nonetheless.